What's up, moviegoers and true believers? Welcome to another episode of The Real Comics Podcast. I'm your host, Voodoo57, and with me, as always, is my good friend, SpeedyG33. SpeedyG33, what's up, man? What is up on a Wednesday? Hey, guys, my bar. It's staying. <laughs> Positive thoughts for my bar. Positive thoughts for your bar. Well, we're going to have to test that, this little bar theory out a little later of yours. Anyway, everybody, how's it going? Good to be with you again. Here we are on Wednesday night. We've got a great show for you. We're going to have some news. Might even talk a, a little bit about some comics. We've also got the Star Wars Minute Bullshit Story of the Week. And, of course, our main theme for this evening is called The Director's Cuts. Now, uh, Speedy G, uh, we've been talking about this for a little bit ever since you saw The Director's Cut of Batman Superman. And it's still kind of on our mind as to what other movies that we've enjoyed that have had either had director's cuts or really deep um, or a lot of extra footage that was really intended to be in film in some of our mm -hmm. favorite movies. Uh, and so we're going to discuss a little bit of that tonight, yeah? Yeah, definitely, because it's one of those things, it seems like especially the ones we've picked, there was a little controversy along with all films, like the director wasn't able to give his, what he wanted to give us. Yeah, it's Or, been you know, and one, the other one, he was allowed to do things just because it was cool. But in some of the other ones, they're a little more like Snyder. They, they, they had a different vision, and the studio didn't let them have that vision. So they did a director's cut. Oh, yeah. So. I definitely – I've got one that uh, the studio took to total control, and it really upset one particular director. And we'll get into that one a little bit later. We'll save that stuff. Yeah. But first, we've got a little news to get into. Speedy G, why don't you kick us off with our news for the evening and uh, right. our – podcast for tonight go for it all right let's start with some rumor okay it is sounding like jared leto spent 24 hours in london and we all know what's filming in london so was he there just maybe for music purposes you know he isn't a band he could be up there singing you know people like to make something bigger than it is um or was he there because the joker is in the justice league I don't know. I don't know. That would be good. I don't know. I think they are. I don't. They, I got to ask you this real quick. So I'm going to make a question out of this news item. Do you think they're really pushing this Joker thing? We know we're going to get a taste of him in the Suicide Squad. We know that they want to do a Batman movie, and he's definitely going to be in it. Now they're going to throw him in the Justice League. Was he meant for, you know, Batman versus Superman, all that stuff? Do you think it's too much? What do you think? It depends. Now, we talked about this a long time ago. Something you don't know about is that flash scene in Batman vs. Superman right. leads us to believe that they are possibly doing the Injustice storyline. If they are doing the Injustice storyline, the Joker is involved. And, it, and when Flash talks about that, it directly involves the Joker. So, yes. Without giving away stuff to you, yes. If that's the storyline, which I believe it is, then yes, he is a major player. Okay. Interesting, interesting. I like it. I like this news. Now, idea. he I don't think he'd be a big player in this one, this first one, but he may be a major player in the second Justice League. Okay. Right, right. But but you kind of gotta have him pop up, maybe. So very See, I mean cool. we gotta wait for Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad might make that clear to us. Like they may leave Suicide Squad in a way that you have to believe Joker's in the next one, just the way it ends. So we don't know. We'll have to right, see. right, right. Clearly, I just you know he hasn't been on screen yet as the Joker. Now, of course, we've heard good things. We already have our assumptions from what we've seen from the trailer. So that's my only concern: is that are we, mm -hmm. are I should I say, is Warner Brothers putting the horse before the cart? We haven't even seen the Joker yet, and he's already possibly set to slated to appear in possibly three future movies. Yeah, that's why Little took that spot, that part instead of Doctor Strange. It's a big part, and the Joker is a big part of this universe, and I really like that he's, he's kind of branched out of the Batman thing. And like I said, if it's this role, you know, Batman's dealt with him for years, so Batman kind of knows how to deal with his stuff. But what's going to happen is he's going to mess with another hero who isn't equipped to deal with somebody of this level of insanity, you know, 
and it's gonna it's gonna create chaos, some very incredible chaos. Well, I can honestly, yeah, I can honestly say I'm like I'm nervous, but I definitely am excited because you know when this whole thing kicked off, I was definitely one of those guys that was like I'm not sure about this guy. The more that I've seen, I'm like okay, I'm like. Yeah, Get there's so much it. unknown until we see Suicide Squad. Like, we, I don't know what, what kind of Joker we're going to get. All those rumors, could he be one of the Robins? You know, there's all kinds of strange stuff out there that we're not going to know until movies come out. But. Yeah, too much speculation, but definitely exciting. But Very fun. cool. Very cool. That's the first news story. So since yeah. we're on the topic, why don't we slide right on into something else that involves the Joker and Batman, and that is the release of the trailer for The Killing Joke, for the move for the theatrical release talk to me about that give us your, your opinion of this specific trailer um it made me excited to see it uh it looks good um i think they did a okay job of trying to capture the artist's art now if you've read the killing joke and you've seen the art and the and the killing joke um it is so detailed and it's, it was always going to be almost impossible to truly translate that to an animated kind of situation. But it looks pretty good. You know what I mean? It looks pretty good considering. And, and the iconic scenes were there, that scary shit in the, um, the ride with Gordon. With That's Gordon. some really disturbing stuff. Yeah. So they're, all right, they're showing us that they're not going to be scared to go there. So it's, it's rated R. I've got my tickets. I'm going to see it on the big screen because I think it's worth it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, Pretty definitely stoked. excited to check it out. I got to tell you, I agree with something I read today. Uh, they said next to Heath Ledger, the best Joker of all time is actually Mark Hamill, mm -hmm. and the way that he plays the Joker. So this has all got me very excited. And and uh, it's Conroy playing um playing Batman. Batman. They got the originals, and I believe um what's her name who plays Harley and plays. Like she's in the movie as well. She's in the she movie. That little well. thing I posted on our yeah, Twitter. She, yep, that little that little gif of uh, Mark Hamill and that uh, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, yeah. but uh, she plays Harley Quinn and he was she was sitting in his lap, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were they were doing a little uh, Harley Quinn Mr. J moment. Yeah, uh, Alan Moore took it somewhere that no one else has had the guts to take it, and right. it's a pretty brutal story. Um, it's a kind of one of those things as a comic book fan, it's a must read, but it, it is brutal and it is dark. It's probably the darkest thing you're going to read. Very you know, cool. DC Comics. See, I don't mind dark. I like this. I, I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah, for that. but yeah, it's, it's pretty disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> we know that much. All right. Awesome. What's next on the new slate? Let's see. What do we have next? Oh, now I'm going to do a little sp brain space. Um, Oh, Thor Ragnarok started filming um, this week. Um, they've been posting little pictures, but nothing big time from the set. But it's, it's pretty exciting to know that it's happening. You know what I mean? That it's finally going to happen. You know, this cast, you know, I'm really excited for the Thor cast. And if you would have asked me a year ago, like upcoming movies, what's what are you excited for? There's no way Thor would have been in my list. You know, I'd be excited. Okay, we'll finally get a movie with Wasp. I'm excited. I'm going to finally get the Black Panther movie. I'm going to get the Spider-Man movie. You know, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is coming. I mean, really, Thor was not on my radar because well, the second Thor was so, you know, wasn't very good. So, But this cast is really exciting in the fact that we could have World War Hulk in there, too, a little bit of that. Yeah. That's going to be great. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, the last two movies I've been kind of eh. And so I'm really hoping that they're going to try to find a way to make this third one really bang, really pop, really make us laugh, really make us think. And then, of course, keep it in perspective with the rest of the universe. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited. I, I just think that I didn't mind the first movie. And I like the fact the first movie spent a lot of time in Asgard, and we're going to spend more time in Asgard and then somewhere else. We're going to be in space. We're not going to be on Earth, in other words, where I think Thor is the best. Because on Earth, he's so much more powerful than everything else that it's kind of boring. On, right. And these, he's going to fight things that are as powerful as him. So he could lose. And with a little bit of possibility that he could lose, it makes him more interesting. That's when he's more interested. So. Gotcha. Very true. Very true. I agree. All right. 
Next thing, I'm up. I got a little something here for all you Game of Thrones fans. Prepare to be a little sad because winter has definitely come. <laughs> Literally. Uh, it's all over the internet. It's everywhere you look. Twitter, Facebook, everybody's talking about it. Where they film a lot of these scenes, especially the winter scenes, they're having some severe weather storms, which does what? It pushes back production, and so now the seventh season, we may get it months later than expected. There will be a big delay for the next season of Game of Thrones, and this has Game of Thrones fanatics, much like myself, kind of going, oh, crap. Are we really going to have to wait till winter to actually see the next season? You know, it's interesting is I also read because of that, they're limited on how many days they have to film because they don't want to film in the summer. Right. Because it won't look right. So they right. want to film during winter months too. So they don't have as much as long of a time to film and that makes it more difficult. But hey, if they do it right, they do it right. When I first saw the headline that they were going to delay this, I was like, oh man, I hope they're not trying to like, like HBO was pressuring them to do more episodes right and they were like in some kind of negotiation like okay we'll pay you more just give us more episodes because we need this to stretch longer let's ring this out but i'm glad that that's was it because i am content that it's just going to be seven and six and i know some people are like oh but it's gonna be over i'm okay with over man some things <laughs> got to end as long as they end well i don't you know shows the drag and drag and drag and drag on forever nah. no. <laughs> i want to end i want to end game wrap the story up well, I think we're definitely going to get an end game. It's just a matter of when we get it now with all these actual winter storms taking place. So very interesting very news. Exciting. Cool. What else do you got? Another show, um, Preacher got renewed for a second season. So super good news there. Um, that excites me because Preacher can go on. Speaking of an end game, it does have an end game, but I believe there's eight or ten books. I can't remember. So eight or 10 graphic novels. So there's a lot of material still to go. While there is an end to this story, and it's been written for a while, so we know the end, um, there's a lot of material to cover. So they, they have at least, I'm going to say five seasons, depending on how they do it. Right. They have four or five seasons, probably five. And that's exciting that they're going to renew it, and hopefully people are watching it. Everyone's talking about it, but I don't know if they're watching it. You know, that's two different things. Yeah, I, I talked to a couple are. of people, and they found it hard uh, to kind of keep in their wheelhouse. I was fascinated with it from the beginning. I'm only about a show behind, I think, at this point. But I, you know, I like what I'm seeing. I love what I've, what I, how I feel the show, where the direction where it's going, and mm -hmm. so definitely excited for another season. That's for sure. I just hope the ratings and people can get into it. I know mm -hmm. it's a little strange. It's definitely a little bit different, but. You know, I'm disappointed that it's in the summer. I think that hurts it a bit. I think the show is strong enough that it could be during regular, you know, the season so that people could, more people watch. I just don't think as many people watch television in the summer. Right. It's just you're traveling, you do things in the summer, um, go to movies, a lot more things where I think it could hold its own during the regular season following, <laughs> if it followed Walking Dead. Right. This is going to have to follow Walking Dead because of its content. It's it's even darker than Walking Dead, so it can't come out earlier. Um, but yeah, we'll see. You know. That's for sure. Very cool. All right, I got another news story. Speaking of Walking Dead, this one's been out for a little bit, but I don't. I want to make sure that it gets mentioned at least on our podcast. Uh, I'm very curious to see you know what your thoughts are. I know we've got a long way to go. I know you and I talked about this before. Uh, and what your thoughts are of The Walking Dead to this point. Um, but I do want to mention real quickly that it was announced uh, by some of the people there on set that 11 different scenes were shot for that last end season spot with Negan. So nobody knows what they're going to air. You can read the books, you can guess, you can you break down audio, you can do all that crap and you think that you know what it is, you don't. They wouldn't have gone through the trouble to film 11 different versions. And I'm going to tell you, they're probably just going to pick the one that they think works the best for the cast, the show, and everything else. That's my opinion. Uh, what do you that. think, Speedy G? I do don't believe that. Because they've written the second season, so they know who's got to be around. Because they can't write the stories without knowing who's going to be there. Right. Um, so I'm going to disagree with you. And then the other thing, I don't care if they did 11. If it's not Glenn... And, or it's not Daryl, 
then that's what I say to Game of the to um, Walking Dead. The other ones, I won't care. I literally won't care if they kill anyone else. Those are the two it has to be for it to have an impact. If it's not one of those two, I don't care. I honestly will be let down by it. This is supposed to be a major death. Okay, they kind of dropped the ball on it being um, Glenn because of their stupid dumpster thing. So to do Glenn again might be kind of weak. So it has to be Daryl. I'm sorry, no one else makes an impact. Uh, this is supposed to be an impact. This is supposed to be a game-changing moment in the series. That's what Negan is. So, okay, you're not going to kill Rick. Rick would be the only other one, but they're not going to. Obviously, Rick's not dying. Rick is the major character of this whole thing. And I, would they kill a woman? I don't know, maybe. But I still don't think they have a big impact as the, one of those two guys. Like you said, the, the internet riots or the, everyone riots if they kill Daryl. Good. Riot. That'll be interesting. That would be good. You know, I, I, I know you have this little fatalistic idea, but it, it won't be Daryl, and you know that. It's, you know it's it won't be Daryl. It it's won't a movie be about zombies. It won't be Daryl. His, his time will come in a much better way. It will not start off a season. I guarantee you. It will not start off a season. And I'm telling you, oh, I wouldn't be surprised that if they wanted still shock value, that it would be a woman. The worst thing you could possibly do is beat the crap out of a female, even though they probably won't. On screen, on scene, something so brutal that it would just you know shock. They're the not going to show it anyway, right? I don't think they're going to show it. Whoever it is, we're not going to see it. I don't think they're going to show us that. I just don't think it's. If it's anyone else, they're just. You know, I know you don't read the comics, but half the people lined up there on their knees are already dead anyway. They're they're living on borrowed time. They died in the comics ages ago. Right. So it, it's for it to have an impact, it has to be somebody that hurts. And I guess where I get mad right now is Walking Dead is catering to the fans a little too much. Like, oh, my God, we killed Daryl. Everyone's going to be upset. You know what? Game of Thrones, they don't play that game. Game of Thrones says, I don't care if this is the time for so-and-so to go in this story. So-and-so was going to go. And that's kind of the way the story works. We're about to watch Suicide Squad in a few weeks. I hate to break it to everybody. The name of the movie is Suicide Squad. So those people you see on the poster, about four or five of them ain't going to be there at the end of this movie. And people are just, I, mean, I can hear people crying from here. You know, why did they kill that guy? Why did they kill that girl? Why? They, you know, it's called the Suicide Squad. You know, other than Harley Quinn, I, I really honestly can't guarantee anyone else in that cast. No, they're not killing. They're not killing Harley, obviously. Gotcha. But even, you know, dead shots not 100% safe, if you ask me. So. Okay. Very cool. All right, moving on. What do you got next? Um, the only other thing I have is the comic book stuff. Um, if we wanted to jump into that or you want to jump into comics? regular news. Let's just go ahead and jump. Yeah, right into our um, comics right now? Well, Combo, I was going to do a review on Nighthawk today. Um, that was my original goal, but I've decided to kind of leave that alone based on what's happened in real life lately. Um, don't want to get into that too deep, but let's just say that Nighthawk kind of is too close to the real world right now. What's going on in Nighthawk with corrupt policemen and different things like that, it's kind of a little close to what's happening in the real world about people. Well, why don't you go ahead and, you know what, I, why don't, okay, so you brought it up, and you're gonna. It's, we're gonna bring a little serious tone, just for a minute. We're not gonna well, get into discussion about it. The best way I'm gonna do a quick description of Nighthawk. To me, Nighthawk, because it definitely takes a lot of influence from Batman, is a cross between Batman and The Wire, and it's set in inner city Chicago. And there's a lot, especially in these first two episodes, talking about um, wrongful shootings by police officers. And that's what was later. So I. I you know, yeah, I kind of told we, people we, I was going to talk about this book, but I just don't think it's the, yeah. Yeah, we'll leave it out and of And that's there. the only reason I brought it up, because I kind of told some people that I was going to talk about it. And I'm like, I don't I don't feel like it. I just, it, I could go somewhere and get angry or something. Well, we're not going to get into the discussion, but but what Speedy G is talking about, there was, there was an African-American male uh, today or last night who uh, was unfortunately – shot by two police officers in an incident in Louisiana. And then there's video footage. I'm not, we're not going to get into this discussion, but this is what Speedy G is talking about. I totally get it. 
Um, but let's. And the comic talks about. I mean, that's what the comic's based in. It's based in like the the kind of urban scene and things right. that are happening. You know? And so it's too close, you know, for me to talk about a comic when real life is happening. It's kind of. Uh, yeah. Great. <laughs> so. Well, well, moving on then. What else yeah. you got over there? Well, on a happier note, um, for me at least, I think it's kind of neat that we're finding out that. Um, Iron Man is going to become little Iron Woman. Um, that there's going to be a young lady that's going to take over for Iron Man. I'm not happy about how we found out about it because this is the second time Marvel's let some let one of these big um, mainstream media magazines kind of leak the surprise. You know, they did it with Captain America and they leaked that he was with Hydra that morning before anyone had bought the comics yet, which yeah. is kind of a bummer. And then this kind of came out when. It kind of lets us know that somehow in the end of the Civil War event that's happening right now, Tony's not going to be Iron Man anymore. And so is he going to die? Is he going to get injured? You know, I wish we didn't know that because it almost makes me feel like Tony's going to lose. or I don't know what it is, but I just wish we didn't know that. So from that standpoint, I'm a little PO'd at Marvel. But I like the idea. Um, I think it's a neat idea. I knew she was coming because I've bought in some of the Invincible Iron Man comics. Just because they they lead into Civil War, and when I'm reading a series, I like to read all the peripheral comics as well. But it's interesting. Her name's Riri, Riri Williams. She's going to be she's 15 years old. She is a student at MIT, and she's a little genius. And what it is is she's um, reverse engineered one of his old suits and has built her own suit. Right. And she's out there flying around and testing a suit out and everything. And of course, she gets on Tony's radar, kind of similar to how Spider-Man does in the movies. So I think at some point, it hasn't happened in the comics, he's going to go take her under his wing and, you know, train her. And, and the way they described it when I was reading the interview with um, Bendis, who I really trust, that's who's writing it. Um, Tony's fascinated because this little girl's smarter than him. And he has never been around someone like where she is at her age. He knows that she's going to blow blow by him, right? And it kind of like freaks him out, like, oh my god, this girl's. See, now this is a very interesting take. You and I had a nice discussion on this earlier, and I tried to bring the other side. And the other mm -hmm. side is that you know when it comes to Marvel comics, and it's it's hard for me to have a foothold or somewhere to stand when I haven't been embedded in comics as you have mm -hmm. from the from the beginning. And all I hear is that okay, here comes Marvel. They're going to change another character. We went from female Thor to um, – There's been it, four it, major ones. There's right. Been female Thor, Thor Spider-Man. So, there's Spider-Man became Miles. Miles. Um, Miss Marvel became little Kamala Khan. Right. And then now this one. These are the I, four big ones that have happened. Um I could see how people are saying, you know, it's, you know, they're changing everybody. They're changing everything. Because then you throw in, like I was telling you, the new kick ass on, in the comics is going to be a young black girl. I love your um, you know, if you have in the few, that past few years, um, Green Lantern Corpse. Hal Jordan isn't the main, he's Green Lantern, but he's kind of not really. They're focusing on Jessica Cruz, a Latina woman. And um, what's Baz's last name? I can't remember Baz's last name, but he's a young black man. And so they're the, the Green Lanterns that they're focusing on. And I get people say, oh, all our favorite characters are going away. They're going away. And I look at it as, well, we as a comic book reader are getting older. So even though we still buy things, we are going to only be around for so many more years. And buy. they have to they have to relate to these kids that are reading the comics. So right. they're, they're going after the kids. And, and they look at it. And a lot of girls are reading comics, my friend. Yeah. A lot of young ladies are reading comics. I see it on our Twitter a lot. It, it just amazes me that how it's changed. And the difference between young girls and young boys is the boys are not as loyal. The boys are knee-jerk. They talk a lot of shit, but they don't get off their ass and go buy the comic. Right. The girls buy the comic. They buy the T-shirt. They buy the Funko. They cosplay. They go to the Comic-Con. They, You know, they... Are consumers just right, like they're, they're else, like, you know like they're, when you go to the mall the mall's set up for little girls young teenage girls not right. little girls teenage girls because they are consumers and if they like something whether it's anime or or clothes or whatever the hell it is they consume it man and they right. buy it and so i understand where marvel's coming from to kind of relate to these young ladies and so well, i just i just hope that the stories evolve yes 
and that they evolve properly that this just isn't a stunt to try to grab the urban crowd or the urban yeah. scene or to see more um what's the word i'm looking for not relevant um to see more open to other cultures and ethnicities mm -hmm. they're just buying into that i want to see these stories evolve with it now if the story is exactly with right it, I'm, I'm i'm totally down but you know i'm 100 percent with you that's yes the stories i don't care what color or what yeah. age or what gender the story has to be good or guess what i'm not going to buy it right yeah I, I will stop reading and and the great thing about nowadays because i do read comics um i don't have to stick to the big two there is some great stuff being written by you know all these other comic book labels besides marvel and dc so if they're not doing the job it's very simple it's it's just common economics i'm going to stop buying this and i'm going to go buy that i don't have to keep reading something and that's my attitude and but again, if there is a fandom for it and they keep reading it, more power to them. I don't have to read it. I can read something else. And, and that's where I have no problem. I'm not one of these people like, well, I really love Iron Man and now I'm not going to want to read it. You know what? There's a lot of things I've liked in my life. And as time went on, they kind of got crappy and I moved on to something else. Right. That's just the way it is. That's the way it goes sometimes. Cool. <laughs> Very awesome. Great. Awesome with the news. Okay. Are we ready for the world famous? Bullshit story. Yeah, of the week. Yes. You it's got the tiny ready? one. It's okay. a tiny one. Okay. It's but all right. Throw it out there. <laughs> it really, really made me laugh. And okay. it happened yesterday, I believe. Um, for like a for a hot minute, there was speculation that Colin Farrell was in the um, Justice League movie and he was gonna play the new villain Steppenwolf. And it was starting to go, it was starting to go. And El Mayembe from Hawk Hollywood, who's a big time scooper, he smashed that shit like like faster than fast. He came out and said, please retweet this. He is not playing the villain and I doubt he's in the movie. And then like five minutes later, he is not in the movie at all. Please retweet this before people start running with this story. I mean, he just crushed it. And there was a few stories that came out afterwards and people that didn't catch the memo that this was bullshit. But yeah, everyone was trying to say Colin Farrell was the big bad guy in, um, what's it called? In a in um, Justice League. The Justice League movie. Gotcha. And, uh, it was just funny. It, I just people just they crack me up, man. You know, they see a picture, they they do something, and they decide to send. You know what I thought of, and I don't know if it's true. I'm seeing stuff say that um, there's a little video going around that she posted on Instagram. Um, Ridley um, from Star Wars that she's working out, and she has some like thing on her head, and her hair is covered. And so they're saying she's hiding her new Jedi hairdo. Right. She can just be big. Cuts her hair up, man, because she's working out. You know? People take this stuff and run with it. So are you calling that? Is so is yeah, this yeah. officially yeah, don't hold it up. It's officially the bullshit story of the week. It didn't make it to be a full bullshit because someone stopped it like and they pinched it off mid poop. <laughs> Why? Oh, but man. it was on its way to be the bullshit story of the week. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Okay, let's take a deep breath from the bullshit story of the week. <laughs> Gather up our thoughts with that funny ass poo emoji that you got rocking over there. I wish I would have got one. Yeah, I'm telling you, saw a whole bit of that stuff. There wasn't one in there. Anyway, and let's move on to our uh, Star Wars minute. You and I are going to share some time with this one. Uh, we got a lot. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't call it a lot, but there's some serious Star Wars news here to talk about. Uh, very exciting news, especially for me, El Star Wars nerdito over here. Uh, and the first story is that we are going to get on July 15th about a three minute long new trailer for Rogue One, a Star Wars story, which I'm super excited about. Now initially when this was released, it was just said that during the evening on ABC, there would be a, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, sort of a behind the scenes or, or movie mm -hmm. uh, about the making of Star Wars, correct? Uh, making the, um Force Awakens. Force right. Awakens. And so sometime in between, they're going to air this, which is still slated to happen. Mm -hmm. Then it changed. And it changed to they're going to do that. But at the same time, in London, Star Wars Celebration will be happening. And there will be a panel of the Rogue One celebrities who are slated to be in the movie. And during that, during the day here in America, Approximately, they're guessing at about 11 a.m. roughly Eastern time, 
you can actually stream it live and catch it before the evening's viewing. So that's super awesome, Speedy G. I'm like yeah. stoked. I know I'm going to be watching that all morning if I can. Yeah, I figured it'd be just like it was for Force Awakens. The panel was all out there. They talked to them, everything, and then they go, okay, now we're going to show the trailer. And the panel got to watch the trailer at the same time. That's awesome. Yeah. The house lights came down, and everybody got to see it. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of speculation of what is in this trailer. Three minutes long for a trailer is, is technically, that's a lot of time, about three, three minutes, 3.20. We've only had a teaser so far, and uh, I am super stoked to see this. I'm really curious who's hosting. That's the one thing I haven't seen yet. I wonder yeah. who's hosting it, like who's asking the questions and everything. Since it'll be in London, I'm sure it's somebody that's going to be kind of local, but still yet maybe famous. I, I'm not quite sure. Um, no. it, it'd be great if we can get a little insight to that good questions. Too. we got to get some good stuff out of these guys. Yeah, that's get one of them sure. to slip up. Slip up <laughs> and say something they shouldn't be saying, that's for sure. Very <laughs> cool. All right, you also got a bit of Star Wars Rebels news. What do you got? Oh, I was just reading. You told me it might not be as new, but I was reading um, right. the guy who's behind producing all of the uh, Rebels. It's kind of hinted very strongly that some of his minor characters are going to be seen in a film at some point, you know, that they're going to blend right in or, you know, seamlessly take you into a film. That's kind of neat, you know. I, I feel like very cool. that's what I wanted from Marvel when they talked about doing the TV stuff and the Netflix stuff, and they just didn't do it. For whatever reason, everything fell apart. We could spend a lot of time on that. It seems like Star Wars has it more together, and they always did, even when Lucas was involved, that this is all canon, and this book, it does affect this movie, and this comics do kind of affect this movie a little bit, and this video game, and these cartoons. And I think it's really awesome, because it's a nice payoff to the people that watch the cartoons, young fans too you're developing young fans i mean i see again see it a lot on the twitter and everything there's so many fans for sabine sabine is so popular man they, they they do a sabine shot in one of these like star wars stories these kids are gonna lose their mind you know <laughs> <laughs> sabine for those who don't know uh in star wars rebels is actually i believe she's mandalorian correct mm -hmm. uh and she uh she's not the pilot She's technically just kind of a, a, a cuter, funner version of maybe a young Boba Fett, female mm -hmm. version. Uh, and she's become very popular on the show. Uh, she's got a helmet. Um, I think she even, there was even an episode I thought it was quite strange where she was, she was even making like tags, like with a spray paint can. Hmm. Like, like. Get a, like you know area tag like you know <laughs> wow. I thought that was cool and she made one for the for the lead character on that nice. particular episode back when I watched it so yeah she's very cool she's got a lot of uh, weapons she's very crafty she's skilled uh, street wise uh, she's yeah. awesome she's very popular and I'll go back to kind of what we're talking about the female Iron Man same thing so yeah. many young women are just all over her they think she's the best in the world they just love her I, I last Friday because I do a fan art Friday post and I did four Star Wars pictures. That Sabine picture got tweeted all over the world and liked, and people just ripped it off and took it and went with it. That that was the one, you know. None of the other ones really made any impact like that one. That one was the one that people just latched onto. Well, you're like you said, you're definitely right. As a Star Wars fan, I can't get enough of whether they got rid of the old canon, canon and are creating new canon. Mm -hmm. I want to read it. I want to watch it. I want to learn about it. I want to see it. I want more knowledge even at my age or to pass on to the, you know, what my kids like about it or what somebody else's kids like about it. Mm -hmm. I think that at first all those moans and groans from getting rid of the old canon were, were warranted, but I think yeah. they've done a good job of yeah. passing on the torch and creating What happened with the old canon? So many of us, myself included, invested a lot into it. I right. was very angry and I so invested was I. <laughs> a lot into it. I read a lot of stuff and, and I thought a lot, you know, one thing that people don't take in, into account when they think about Star Wars is, okay, I'm not going to get into the prequels, but the original three films came out so long ago, and there was so much time in between. It's not like it is nowadays, like they whip out another sequel. You know, we're on to fucking Transformers 12, you know, you know, <laughs> where they just keep on going. And they just, that was it. Three movies. Sayonara. So the only way you can sit continued 
that Star Wars love were the books. You know, we didn't have all these video games that kids have nowadays. We didn't have all, all these cartoons that kids have nowadays, comics. There were some comics, but there was very little stuff to continue. So the little bit there was, we poured over. Like, like this is such awesome. This is Star right. Wars. It continues. And so when they took it away and they just said it didn't count, it kind of hurt. Yeah, probably that's what it was. It kind of hurt, but it had to be done because they would have been handcuffed. There was too much cannon, and they would have been handcuffed. So I understand why they did it, but it hurt. <laughs> agreed, agreed. All right, I think that's about it for our start. Is there any other news you want to talk about? Anything you want to touch on before we move on? No, I don't believe so. I believe we hit everything. Very cool. All right, so the gist of our show this evening is called The Director's Cut. We wanted to kind of just briefly discuss – uh, a few of some of our favorite films that have director's cuts or enough extra footage and for whatever reason it didn't get used or it changed the story, whether it was the director or the studio. Um, there are movies out there that I don't know if people realize that there are these director's cuts, these long versions of movies that change a lot of the dynamic in these movies. Or ultimate editions is another way because sometimes they just, like you said, they added stuff to make it long. It's not right. that the originals – perceived bad they just want to add more stuff that they couldn't do like you right know, one that we'll get into definitely the movie the theater version was awesome but the movies i mean the extra stuff is just you know, oh for sure stuff. whether whether it was time <laughs> or whether it was to move along the story there are many reasons why a lot of this footage or decisions get made about characters or or, or certain scenes get cut out and so these are a few of our of our favorites and the first one we're going to talk about is the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. You want to get into that bad boy a little bit? See, that's an example. The movies in the theater were just fine. Yeah. And for the average person, they were even a bit long for the average person. You know, it was even as good as it was. It, it's, you know, it's a long set for the I average. believe they were still two hours and 40 minutes roughly yeah. each one. Mm -hmm. that's so time. now we get into these extended editions that some of them, what, did they go into almost four hours? One yeah. of them or something? <laughs> so try that marathon. It's like um, three and a half, three, three twenty to three and a half. The three in a row. But you know what? As a Lord of the Rings fan, as fan, I appreciate so much that he did this. He just gave me so much more. He gave me more of that world, and he did such a good job that um, I love it. And that's the way I prefer to watch it. I own both. I own the regular and I own the special editions, and. I, I watch the special editions. I just think they're amazing. You know, it's just more stuff, more good stuff. Does it change the story? Not too much. That's the one thing I'll give that one. They didn't really change the story. Nothing really happens to the level that you um, get a different story. I'm trying to think, is it is possibly in the second one when they um, meet Boromir's um, brother. What's Boromir's brother's name? Aramir? I don't know. When they have Gollum. There's a little bit of a different kind of scene and approach with that one that, that deals a little more with their, their crazy dad, um, the Mad King, you know. The Mad King. And um, that, I think, is a little different. But it's been a while since I've seen it. So but overall, I think it, it pretty much plays out the same way that the um, theatrical cut plays out. Right. It definitely does. It doesn't alter the story too much. There's a little bit more information that's doled out that ties some of those little pieces together. It keeps uh, some of the holes that may have been there, that, as minor as they were, those get filled. I remember seeing these director's cut movies here. I was the guy, this was the first time I attempted, man, that, it was very hard to watch the original Fellowship of the Ring special edition with a 20 minute break, and then the Two Towers special edition with a 20 minute break leading into the final return of the king and mm -hmm. that was hard dude each movie it was long you're talking yeah. seven and a half hours roughly seven hours yeah. man that was a it was a it was a long and it was harder than i thought but i loved every minute of it and it was fun so yes that's definitely tops one of my tops yeah, on our, on our good, list that was a good reason to do it you know because we talk, I mean, there's so many reasons why these happened. Did, you know, did they have extra stuff and they wanted to make it better? Did they didn't get to release the movie they wanted? There's so many reasons. But that one was well done. And that one was for fun. From yeah. as, as far as I understand it, that one was more about fun. And, and Peter Jackson wanted these scenes in the, 
you know, wanted people to see what he had done. And it wasn't about showing an original version. He just felt that, that you know, he wanted him in there mm -hmm. and he understood why they were removed. And he helped come to that decision. So that was yeah. very cool. Very cool. All right. Next movie up. Ah, Star Wars. That's right. You love them. You hate them. The re redone Star Wars movies by George Lucas. The, the trilogy, the original trilogy. The I altered hate. original trilogy. That's right. I was telling you that I have over there the old original video cassettes. I have the, the trilogy of the original yep. video cassettes. The Dark Vader box. It's the only thing I have that doesn't have all that new shit. All my fancy smancy Blu-rays and whatever. I have to listen to Sny Snoodles or whatever the hell her name is. Sing the song <laughs> and I have to listen to, to Luke give me his weenie old Wilhelm scream as he falls. And just, ah, oh, there's so much I don't like about them. There, there's maybe a two things that I do like, and there's like 10 things that I don't. So in the long run, I think he shouldn't have messed with them. Right. These are the, we're, we're, of course, we are talking about the Lucas altered because of the effects change over the years. He felt that he needed to go back and add all these extra scenes. The most icely scene was jam packed full of do back stormtroopers, Jawas. Yeah, it seems crowded, doesn't it? it? It's overly crowded. I like it yeah. when it was simplified and it was just real. And that's when this whole start of the Lucas machine and the digital era got kind of weird. And um, as much as I love these movies, I also do not care too much for the uh, altered versions. Yeah, um, things that, Return oh. of the Jedi, the the celebration scenes now on each, oh, of, the, each yeah, of the planets. That song and everything. Yeah. Instead and then, of taking the, the, keeping the little Ewok song, they go into that big old, oh yeah. That celebration song. So yeah, yeah. lots. That one's a 50-50. Love the movies, but I'm not sure I love the changes in that. No, you know something I like? Um, Bespin. Bespin oh, looked better. They had it at Cloud City, and there was a couple shots out the window. Mm -hmm. I've got these memorized. And uh, yeah. a couple of the Cloud City speeders kind of went by. Those yeah. were simple and subtle. It wasn't And that, that scene needed it, but yeah. most of the other stuff I just could have done without. What was the yeah. other one that kind of bothered me? It, I mean, it didn't make it any funnier. Oh, the Han Solo chase scene on the Death Star. When he comes around the corner and there's a, a garrison, a small garrison of stormtroopers, and he, you know, he scares them by screaming, him and Chewbacca. Yeah. But in the edited version, George Lucas decided to put hundreds of stormtroopers there, yeah. and it, it just was too much. It was too yeah. much. You know, and then some made sense. I can understand. It didn't look good, but like when he changed Jabba, you know, going back to the first one, to New Hope, he changes Jabba in that scene. Um, where um, Han Solo meets with Jabba before he escapes on the um, Millennium Falcon. Right. Now I get that from conti conti continuity. I can't even say continuity. That. Continuity um, purposes. He he did that in detail and that kind of crap because because he walks across scene and everything. So he has to have Han steps on the tail. Steps on the tail. Yeah, Lucas, you should have just left that shit alone. Yeah. <laughs> Originally, that was the Han beginning. Right. The but end. For those who don't know, and you should if you're watching our show, uh, originally Jabba was supposed to be a human. Yeah. So uh, that's the reason that scene was kind of added in. They kind of placed that over the human character at the time. And uh, then they just didn't like how he looked. He, looked, he did look really wormy and uh, funny, and then they tried to alter it and fix it. And it still kind of looked out of place a little bit. So You know, thinking back, that nice noodles should have been the indication that we were going to get a Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Very true. That's a good point. Seen like okay, he's playing with this silly little, um, you know, puppet creatures. thing. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna get something up, and that's was the next step was him creating Jar right. Jar Binks. And of course, the very the most famous change. Don't forget about the most famous change. Uh, we went from having old Darth Vader to having Anakin Skywalker as the. Oh yeah, you know what? I blocked that. Oh, <laughs> we, that we, we got oh, Hayden Christensen yeah. at the very end of Return of the Jedi uh, oh, yeah. with, with Yoda and with Ben Kenobi. Uh, you know, I, I We need a whole other podcast for me to complain about what the hell that was all about. Well, oh. you know what? You know what? I, I honestly, let me tell you, let's do a quick version of this real quick because I know we, we've got other stuff to get to, but I kind of understand what they were going for. I just didn't think they pulled it off. Now, 
simply put, the more they thought about it when they went to redo these movies was the fact that if Darth Vader was saved as he was at the end of Return of the Jedi, so to speak, Luke saves him from the dark side, he wouldn't be his old self. He would be Anakin prior to turning to the dark side. That was the idea. I know it is, but that was their idea, and I kind of get it. I kind of understand it. I just think it was a fail. No, they should have <laughs> left it as the old, as the dad. Yeah, that was a weird reach. And, man, <laughs> talk about a jarring experience to see his face again. <laughs> Oh, oh man. Yeah, it was a God, one. I blocked that, man. Oh, I need <laughs> therapy. That's like one of those you got to put a warning. Probably for our listeners, you should have put a warning. That's a trigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Warning. Somebody's may, pounding may on their computer or their phone may, right now. <laughs> may cause you to chuck your computer through the window. Uh, very <laughs> cool. All right, let's get something very near to, dear to you. Why don't you talk a little bit about Daredevil, especially? Daredevils. You know, okay. The Ben Affleck Daredevil we're talking about. That was not a very good movie. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I was really disappointed because I'm a huge Daredevil fan. And so I was excited when that Daredevil movie came out. Right. And I was excited. Kim Smith was involved. John Favreau. All these people I liked were involved. Ben Affleck coming off of comics. I knew he was a comic fan. And it let me down. And it just, just had holes and was weird and had some different things. Then I got a hold of the director's cut later. And it's much better. Now, this doesn't turn from a, um, a C movie or a D movie to, to – it doesn't go up to an A, okay? Right. If it's a D, it goes up to a C. You know what I mean? <laughs> so – but it is a better cohesive. It has a story um, – it has a Matt Murdock story, actually, where he's um, defending a criminal that's played by Coolio. You remember Coolio? Right. He's completely cut out of the whole thing in the um, direct um, – theatrical cut just to, it's a little darker it, it just makes a little more sense um so if you're gonna if you've never watched the daredevil movie and you're curious you know you want to see stiff old Affleck in that suit because he was stiff as hell um go watch that version instead you know you don't want to watch the other one because you right. won't make it through it if you watch the other one i agree i was i was uh right down the middle with uh daredevil um and ben affleck um there were a lot of parts that I liked, and I didn't know the character very well at the time. Um, and this cut, I thought it helped a little bit of the story, but it just it didn't put me over the top. It didn't no. put me over the edge. That was one of those times where I don't think that extra stuff would have helped very, very much. But it wasn't a horrible movie to begin with. So there's some nice visuals in that movie, like when he's hanging on the cross and, right. and different things on the rooftop. But, you know, there's some okay things, and I have like did give a little charm, the Matt Murdock charm, because to me, Matt Murdock is charming. If you see the new on Netflix, he's charming when he's yeah, himself. He That's why he's a ladies guy. He, you know, he's a ladies and, man. And um, you know, Affleck did give a little bit of that. He did what he could with what he had. So, for sure, most definitely, cool. They spawned Evanescence. You know, that was Evanescence. <laughs> big old break. That's right. That song would have never happened if it wasn't for Ben Affleck. Affleck. Cool. All right. I want to talk about a particular director and a specific movie. And this one I'm bringing up because the original intention and version of this film was completely changed by the way than it was in the theater. And that is specifically uh, James Cameron. He's got a couple of uh, director's cuts out there for Aliens uh, and that added a lot of stuff to it, good stuff. But specifically the movie The Abyss. The mm -hmm. Abyss had a tone about it uh, that was completely different in the director's cut than it was in the theater. When this movie was released, if you remember, this was an underwater movie that dealt with possible underwater aliens, just to be straightforward. Spoiler alert, okay? But it was focused around, um, you know, these good, helpful aliens who saw something happening and, and kind of, you know, they were part of the movie. They invested and they involved themselves in such a way that they helped save somebody in the movie and then they reveal themselves at the end. If you watch the director's cut, and this was a choice by the studio, James Cameron was not happy. So in the director's cut, the aliens are actually pissed. What was cut out was a massive tidal wave that was about to wipe out an entire seaboard. It, 
they had whirlpools that were destroying ships. This was more of an alien attack than it was about these group of people who were contracted to save a military sub and get the nukes off of it before you know the Russians did, so to speak, mm -hmm. back at that time. So this movie is completely different if you watch the director's cut with yeah, the added I've never seen footage. It. Yeah, this is one of those times where the movie, it's two movies. It's yeah. really two movies, and to that's me, odd. The original is kind of like a Close Encounters of the Third Kind in the world. Right. It that's was. It is like the friendly aliens teaching them stuff. And it, you know, and I saw it and I thought, ah, it's okay. It's interesting. It didn't, as a kid, it didn't grab me. And this other movie you're describing, I probably would have went eating popcorn, <laughs> and, you know, like, wow, blowing shit up, you know, t t you know. Well, yeah, the, 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 the scene is, and I can be real specific here, it sticks out in my head. It's when, um, damn, what is his damn name? I can't think of the actor's name, but he's he's taken a dive. He should be dead, but the aliens have brought him aboard one of their ships and decompressed him. And they're basically questioning him about how humans treat each other. And they're so angry, they say, okay, tell us why we shouldn't do this. And they send this giant tidal wave crashing towards, like, let's call it New York, because I don't know, remember where it was. It's going to destroy New York unless he gives a reason. And he has to explain that it's about love, that people love each other, that they are good people. And so the wave, like, stops. And then Cameron's it dies. Such a hippie. Yeah, dude. I mean, they, <laughs> we, they were going to kill us, man. They yeah. were going to destroy us. They didn't yeah. think we were worthy of saving. So. That movie in particular is one that sticks out of my mind as having, you know, that is literally two movies. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. If you see it, I would I would recommend the theatrical version and then watch the director's cut or the special features after secondary, mm -hmm. uh, but because it changes the tone of the movie completely, definitely completely. Cool, very cool. Well, while we're on Cameron, what about his other movie? Uh, which you want you want to talk about aliens you want to talk about avatar all those um, i would say aliens aliens is another one um aliens though i think is a little bit more descriptive of the planet it's funny if you were to watch the director's cut of aliens now you might understand the movie prometheus a little bit better that's how much detail was in aliens back then that they borrowed for the movie prometheus uh and, and i'm kind of an aliens fan aliens is definitely one of my, you know, top ten stranded on a desert island movie. Um, that movie had everything in it, and while the outcome doesn't change, you saw what the this group of people did more to defend themselves against the alien onslaught. You saw how they interacted with each other uh, in the time when you know they all just were basically getting ready to die. Yeah, and um, you could see more of a division. Uh, in the military group, uh, and that one was huge to me because you could see already that they were fighting amongst themselves. You see it a little bit, but you see it even more how much they hate the uh, platoon leader who has gotten mm -hmm. them into this predicament to the beginning and to begin with. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you kind of only see it at a certain moment when he gets knocked out. But in the extra, in the director's cut version, no, it started beforehand. It's these little things that keep pecking at him about how he doesn't know what he's doing. He's brand new. He doesn't have a clue. And then, of course, there's more Paul Reiser, uh, the comedian from Mad About You on NBC, who uh, plays this sneaky little bastard who's trying to impregnate Sigourney Weaver or Mute to get one of these aliens back to Earth in order to, in order to weaponize it. And you see more about what he does and what he's thinking and how he goes about actually dropping that thing in there while they're in there. And they had cut all that stuff out. They might have thought it might have been too intense, um, mm -hmm. but it did lend some more credence. And, of course, the best part of probably about that movie is there's a bit more of the fight scene between Sigourney Weaver in the mechanical suit and the queen of the aliens. There's a bit more of that battle, and that's kind of one of my favorite things about that movie, of course, too. Okay. Oh, and there's, a, there's an, another um, – real quickly here. There's another small scene with Bishop, which plays the and alien robot. And you, you can see he's he's still okay, but there was another moment where he's drifting a bit, and you start to question because all the all the androids in these movie series yeah. are, are a little wacko. To be put bluntly, they're a bunch of fuckers, and uh, <laughs> you know they they're out there to 
definitely bring some type about destruction to man for some damn reason. But <laughs> it, it was another moment where you weren't quite sure. They already had one in the movie, but there was even another one where you weren't quite sure, you know, what Bishop's plans were. What is he thinking? Mm -hmm. What is what are his thoughts? So that was probably, you know, on that one, yeah, for sure. Um, cool. Uh, something else we need to talk about here real quickly. Um, let's talk about Blade Runner. Gotcha. Ridley uh, Scott's another one. He's done a lot of director's cuts. Yeah. But Blade Runner is easily his most famous director's cut. But yeah, why don't when you I was get looking up Runner? director's cuts, he's yeah. done so many director's cuts, man. He just, you know, he's one of these guys, he's very cerebral, and he knows what he wants to put out, and he makes long movies anyway. I mean, you look at Gladiator, you look at a lot of his movies, they're very long, so that's part of it, too. He, they probably, the studio makes him cut things, things he doesn't want to cut, but Blade Runner's a whole different ballgame, and it's a, been, you know, well documented. There's been books written about it, that the battles he had with the studio over that movie. They did not want to release the ending that he had. You know, they wanted that ending to be completely different, and it is. If you watch the director's cut or the ultimate cut or whatever cut, because there's so many cuts. Yeah, there's 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 a there's three there's there was three re-releases: the original release of the film as is, and then a director's cut, and then the ultimate director's cut, which was authorized by Cameron himself. You mean Ridley? Oh, really? Excuse me. Yeah. Pardon. But still, um, yeah, and they're different. The ending is very different, and and the director's cut is his what he wanted the movie to be. Um, which one's better? This one gets a little iffy for me on which one's better. I like the theatrical version. Um, I don't know if I like the ending in the other one. You know, in his cut. So it's it's. Yeah, they're, they're definitely very different. Um, one of the major factors besides the ending is the fact that in the theatrical version, um, the character Deckard actually is kind of narrating his way through it in certain scenes. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And they pull that out. Yeah, completely. Starting with the re-release and then with the ultimate director's cut. Yeah, he doesn't narrate. Yeah, that's a big difference. And so um, now you're just left with the story itself and then – he kind of goes off on his own little weird, you know, hippie <laughs> yeah. moments. Unicorn think, and, you know. <laughs> if you look back, maybe the studio just felt it was going to be over too many people's heads. Right. And so that's why they wanted the narration so that people would understand what was going on. Because it's not like this movie did very well in the theaters. You know, this is a movie that became a cult classic. Yes. And now it's something that is referenced and – you know, inspires, you know, many, many sci-fi directors and writers and everything. But when it first came out, this wasn't something that everyone just went out to see. It didn't do that well to theater. Right. But you know what? It still holds up today. It's, yeah. You can re-release it today. Uh, you know what I mean? And it, it definitely holds uh, the test of time. Um, the, the director's cut, I mean, wasn't he, correct me if I'm wrong, again, because I know you were reading up a little bit more. He was upset that they didn't use a lot of his stuff. He wasn't happy that the yeah. studio was really cutting a lot of his stuff. Yeah, he, I mean, he he these were real battles that he had with them. Yeah, Very, a lot of anger. I mean, this went on for years. That's why those ultimate cuts, and that's why I think it's taken so long for us to get to this point where he's doing another one. Right. You know, he needed, he probably felt he needed to be in a place where he had the power and the control to make sure this didn't happen again. And I'm very curious. This was what makes me super curious about this new one. Okay, is this is like second chance? So in other words, he's going to make the movie he wanted to make the first time through, right? Even though it's part two, it's going to be basically the story he tried to tell the first time but wasn't able to. That's always an interesting thing. I've seen other directors do things like that where they make another version. I feel that's what Apocalypse is. To, right. To kind of not go too often with singer, but I feel like Apocalypse. This re latest Brian Singer movie is the what he wanted to do in X3. Right. It's his chance to kind of wrap it up the way he wanted to. So. No, very cool. Definitely agree. So we're nailing these movies pretty good. Uh, why don't you know what? With the time we've got left, uh, if you want to, why don't you get into a little bit of you, you already kind of brought it up. If you want to talk about Singer, yeah, uh, Singer's and Snyder and Snyder too. Maybe yeah. we can combine these I'll two. Do Singer first. His is his pretty quick. He he. You know, they released Rogue Cut last year, 
for um, the X-Men Days of Future Past. Um, the biggest thing for Rogue Cut is that it um, puts in a whole storyline that was taken out for the character Rogue. Right. You know, Anna Paquin came back to reprise Rogue. And she had this side mission that she was doing, and they completely chopped it out. I don't, it was probably a time thing, and since it was a side mission, it didn't really lead to the main story. And unfortunately, a great actress who was also a popular character when she was Rogue, it was chopped, and they put that back in. So it's a nice little, to me, that's more of an Easter egg thing. I don't think it necessarily makes the movie better or worse. It's kind of like the Lord of the Rings thing on a lesser level. It's like a little more um, X-Men for you. And this other character is part of the story. So it's not bad. And then sticking with the X-Men, even though it's not Singer, I've told you that the um, the Wolverine cut right. is better. He has a longer fight. He, he rips up ninjas is which, what you want to see because that's what that comic was about. When he goes to Japan, he rips up ninjas. you know, And that's what we want to see. We want to see Wolverine covered in blood, Pile of ninjas everywhere. So you get more of that in the um, that cut. It's a much better version of the movie. Um, again, this doesn't turn a C movie into a, an A. You know, it's sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can't polish a turd. You no, just can't. You know, like I even <laughs> said with Batman vs Superman, this is they didn't turn it into like an A plus. It just right. that's not what you did. There's still problems with it. And then now I'll segue into Singer with that. Singer is, has done a lot of ultimate slash director's cuts. And I was making the jokes with you that I just don't think this guy can do a movie on, in the time frame that he's told to do a movie. <laughs> I just don't think he's capable of it. You know, right. it's like they say, well, you need to make a two-hour movie, and he makes a three-hour movie. And he just, I don't know, maybe he's like, okay, I hope it works, and then I'm going to release a director's cut. I've heard that Sucker Punch is much better. I haven't seen it. Um, the, he's Dawn of the Dead. He added stuff. Um, the Watchmen is a, a lot better. Are you talking about Snyder? Yeah, Snyder. Snyder. I'm sorry. Did I say Singer? Their names yeah. are mixed up sometimes because they both usually anger me. So I, you know. <laughs> but um, you know, the Watchmen is much better movie. It, you know, there's a lot more comic book stuff. So when I say a much better movie, it might not be a much better movie to the average fan, but to me. It adds more from the comic. And then there's the ultimate, ultimate edition where they actually cut the um, animated movie back into it, which is the came as a companion to your DVD. It's a little anime movie about a pirate and all this stuff. That's woven in the comic. So now that's woven back into the movie like it was in the comic. So again, that that's more fan service where, like I say, Batman versus Superman, I think he was correcting what he wanted and they, they chopped up. Right. So, but yeah, that guy, it's just interesting that he can't seem to um, come to in on his time. Come in you know? on his time. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. So maybe Very cool. See what he does with, you know, Justice League, does he come in all wacky? Yeah, we'll see what he does this time. That's for sure. All right. Very cool. I think we've covered everything. This was our director's cut show. Uh, if you have any questions or ideas, well, go ahead. Is there any movie that you wish there was a director's cut of? Ah, oh, you know, I knew you were going to ask me this, and I tried to think of something earlier. Um, you know, off the top of my head, because I'm trying to think of movies that that had scenes that were left out um, that might have changed or altered something, and I can't think of one off the top mm -hmm. of my head, but. Um, God, I, you know, I can't, I can't think of, there's so many, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what kind of made me think of this topic when I said, well, the first thing I, was, to, everyone was saying, mind. I wish there was a director's cut of this movie and that movie. And you're thinking, well, they may have not even filmed anything, dude. <laughs> what, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, a director's cut of the dark Knight. Uh, if there was more footage of Heath Ledger or even of, of Christian Bale would it be awesome. But I, I don't believe there is a lot of that extra stuff there. Other than something. what's on the DVD. I just thought of one that I don't know what's out there, and you know this movie better than me, but is there another way to cut the crow? Oh, uh, no. Well, okay, no. Uh, here, that's one of my favorites, and that's near and dear to my heart. You know that movie it is. Um, mm -hmm. They had like some – footage they have. That, there is. There is that uh, – there is a particular character called the Cowboy, and he was skeletal. 
Uh, and he was kind of his spiritual guide, his Yoda, let's say. And mm -hmm. they filmed these scenes, but they didn't complete these scenes because they were scheduled to be completed with Brandon Lee in them, but he died. Yeah. So CGI couldn't save those scenes, um, mm -hmm. or a body double couldn't save those scenes. Um, mm -hmm. I know there was another scene that was shot in a church, uh, it, the church scene was a bit longer, and I'm not talking about the final battle scene. He's out in the rain. He's wandering by as, as some people celebrating Dia de los Muertos come by, and mm -hmm. he kind of finds himself inside of a church after helping a little girl. And so, it, it, and they ended up using a version of that scene in the sequel, believe it or not. And they 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 just transposed it and they put it in there instead. So no, I, I unfortunately, that that's a sad one. I wish there was more and more footage. Yeah. Uh, but the, yeah, that was a good one. That, one. <laughs> no, that was a good one, man. You caught it. That's that would have been great if there was more footage to actually add. But that scene's the, that scene is the main one that where he talks to the cowboy, and I wouldn't even call him a Yoda. He 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 kind of basically tells him, you know what, you've done what you've done. It's time to go. You come in with me. We're you're going back to hell, heaven, whatever it was, generally, yeah. if you remember the comic. But, um, yeah, that was about it on that one. Cool. cool. Very cool. All right. I guess it's time to move on and uh, get to saying goodnight. Do you have any shouts outs, anything people should be watching, anything to look forward to this week, anything on the top of your head? No. There was a lot of good comics this week. Like I said, I bought a bunch of comics. I spent too much money. But um, so <laughs> the comics um, or get that Killing Joke is around the corner. Yep, and that's really it. Catch that one. It's a it's a one show thing, right? It's a one show. Uh, it's only going to be in the movies for that one night. That and one night. The day, I think it's the next day or that week they'll release it on DVD. On DVD, me. right? So catch it in the theaters if you can, guys. The Killing Joke. Uh, that is Batman. Rated R. Rated R. Uh, the Joker at his finest. Uh, Mark Hamill. Oh, my God. That's going to be creepy. Can't wait. Very cool. Very cool. Real quick here. <clears throat> my bar's gone again. I just know. Yeah, I was going to say something. I didn't want to say it in the middle oh. of our show. <laughs> Man. The bar hates you, dude. The bar hates you. All right. Well, if you have any questions or comments, or if you're joining us for the first time, please make sure you hit our subscribe button. Check us out. We're generally on every Wednesday, but look for us on Monday when it comes to movie reviews. It's something new that we're going to start trying. We're going to let you know all about it. Check out our Twitter feed. It's at real, R-E-E-L underscore podcast. Speedy G's running that thing very furiously. He hits the comic book stuff. He does all that thing. We are also on Facebook. Look for us there. And, of course, our YouTube channel. Subscribe if you can. Help us out. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. We'll be happy to air your comments maybe even and let us know what you guys think. If you want to get a hold of me directly, you can get a hold of me on Twitter at Voodoo underscore 57. And if you want to talk to Speedy G directly, you can get him at Speedy underscore G33. Um, awesome. Yeah. I want a pub that I'm working on something that's going to be coming out soon. I'm going to be doing a three-part series on Flashpoint to get ready for the new Flash series. That's so right. It's going to be spoiler-filled, though. So if you haven't read it and seen the cartoon, go watch it, read the comic, then come hang out. Or if you're just too lazy to do all that stuff, then I can kind of <laughs> <wait to come. laughs> You want the spoilers now? You just can't wait. Check out Speedy G himself. He's going to have all that information on Flashpoint. But until then, we will see you guys next week. For right now, I'm going to say good night. I'm Voodoo57. As always, be your own hero. Speedy G, say good night. Good night. <laughs> good night, guys. Take care.